Hello everyone, welcome back to Unboost Hobbies. In our last video, we have seen how we can have in memory user details and how we can set up that in application properties in order to retrieve the user details and you know, I know authenticate them. But in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to connect to MongoDB, which is holding a, which is going to hold our user details, and using that, we are going to validate the user and authenticate them and allow them into our resource, right? So, um, so for that, what I've done is I've just added one dependency, which is for the MongoDB, and I've added the configuration uh, to connect to the MongoDB, the host port, and the deep database name. And the next step is we're going to create an entity uh, for to hold the um, user data. Let's say the username and password and other stuff. So it's going to be a simple entity. I'm going to say this as auth user and add this and this is going to hold this. so i've also included long box if you remember so what we can do is we can just annotate this as a data and i'll also annotate this as a builder pattern so in some cases we'll be using that right um so then i'm going to create three fields i mean like four fields here right so this is all it is like I'm not going to include the authorities a role so kind of a thing so it is going to be applying username and password uh, uh, I'll let you know how we can encode them so for this to make it as an uh, uh, Mongo document so I'm just going to make it as a document and I'll just name this as user so that's gonna be the document name right and uh, this is going to be our identity column let let me say this as a ID right and let, all, let me also index on on the username right yeah the entity is done so let me go to the repository and create a new repository uh, for the user or extend mongo repository and it's gonna say auth user and uh, the id field is of type string right so this gives it and then i'm also going to return um i'm not so i'm also going to find the user with the their username so i'll just write a method find by username I'm gonna pass a string and it's gonna be username and what it's gonna return it's gonna be returning us um, um, optional optional of type you auth user right so this is going to return a user with respect to the username right and that's all we need here and let me go to the controller um, where we can create a user controller what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an endpoint which will allow us to register the user right so let me go here and add risk controller and let me quickly create let me uh, copy paste the code what I have in the other one so you don't have to type everything here so now we have the endpoint so which needs um, which needs a uh, user repository auto wired so and we also need the um, password to be encoded right we cannot store uh, a blind password into the DB so that will be visible to everyone so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make use of the password encoder and uh, right so so the, we need to have the all so because this is a constructor injection which I'm gonna make use of I'm also going to inject private final password encoder uh, password encoder Right, so this is going to resolve this one, and so this one is going to come from here, the entity class, and this is going to be get username, right, and I'm going to set the password for this user because in another example I was using a record, uh, so this one is going to be set password and that's gonna be a get password right so that resolves everything 
so whenever we are trying to register a user it's gonna say if it is already exists it's gonna say it's already exists we try again and then if there is any error it's gonna say as the error if it is um, if it's able to successfully save it it's gonna return as created um, status code right so with that uh, we are good with the um, with, uh, with this endpoint let's try to run this application now so you uh, know that we didn't define a bean of password encoder and uh, we didn't uh, exclude this in in the security uh, config to allow uh, the endpoint to all the users right so let me go ahead and run this so let's see what happens to the application so if you look at here so as um, I told earlier so we didn't define a password encoder so that's going to cause an issue because we require a password encoder bean uh, in the context right so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to create a bean for password encoder and so this password encoder we're going to use uh, industry standard one which is going to be uh, the new bcrypt password encoder so this is going to be the industry standard most of the time because we it's going to be tough for any human uh, to crack it even uh, it will take most of the time so before um, you know the hacker cracks the password so we will be more frequent in updating the password for the user right so we'll be asking them to reset their password every 90 days so it's going to be a cumbersome process for a hacker to hack it so now let me restart it um, so so that we can uh, at least try to hit the endpoint and see whether it's working or not so if you look at here the application is started now so let me go to the postman and try to hit this ul right so uh, this is the one which i t was you know testing myself so let me try to hit this ul this is the ul which we have to try so so it's giving us 401 unauthorized which is expected because this ul is not exposed now uh, because all the endpoints are now secured by the spring security as per our, as per our configuration right so what i'm going to do uh, now is i'm going to create a bean um, this bean is going to give the security filter chain and it is going to accept uh, HTTP security HTTP security dot authorize request and this one is going to do the magic for us uh, dot request matchers I'm gonna say register and uh, dot permit all so this is going to allow all the um, um, you know, any user to access this endpoint but we are also going to say any rec any other request has to be authenticated right so this is going to do the magic and then I'm going also I'm also going to do as um, uh, hello HTTP basics right customized with default and I also going to make a form login with defaults and just return it as build so this is going to give us the and there is an exception that will add it to the signature and we'll just return this so with this it should allow us to hit the API let's let me restart it okay the application is started let me go to the postman and try to hit it again so again we got the 401 so what is the reason so let me go back to here so it is not responding us with the proper status right so because there is another endpoint which gives us the error so which is error endpoint we also need to have this inside the request matcher and permit permit it so that it will give us the exact error what is happening right let me restart again application is started let go to the postman now it's try. let's try to hit it and you know, now it says a different error which is 403 forbidden because um, we did disable the cross um, um, filter right so let me go here and let me try to disable CSRF right and let's see for now I'm going to disable this so I will we will have a separate session on uh, how, how we can configure CSRF and how we can retrieve them back 
right so for now I'm going to disable this and restart the server okay the application is started now let me go to postman and uh, let me open the DB and show you whether any data exists so this is an old DB which I tried so this is the f uh, collection which we are looking into the spring security user there's nothing exists here let me try to hit this URL so now it should create a record there we go it shows that it is created and uh, we go to MongoDB and give a refresh so there we go we got the record which is created so if you look at the password so no one can you know retrieve this back you know they, they cannot have um, so this is a hashed password so they cannot um, you know no even if you are sharing it with someone they cannot decode it and um, know the password right even in our application itself cannot decode this so once it is once the password is hashed only uh, the one who created the password can put the password in but it's going to be again hashed and compared with the password so that way it will it is more secure right it is not uh, exposed anywhere so now we are good with uh, you know registering the user now let's uh, move ahead and uh, try to create um, the db uh, the the in user detail service you know which which you can get it so now for now we have defined um, uh, two users which is an in-memory uh, which is inside the in-memory user manager that's going to uh, act as uh, the username and password for us but we're gonna skip this now so we're gonna delete this right so now let's go ahead uh, to the service I'm gonna create a new class um, user user detail service so it's it should be uh, we should implement a method so which is nothing but load load user by um, by name so if you go back to the previous code what we have in the um, in memory database my details manager let me go back here and uh, this has a method the similar method so it, because it is also overriding the method right so if you look at here it's going to be uh, overriding the same method so we'll just copy the same thing because we also have similar um, functionalities that we can do here so let me go back and delete this guy this is not required for us so let me go back to the service and uh, just paste it here so instead of user detail we are going to get um, um, a optional of user right so what we want, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to auto wire the user repo user detail repository so I'll just go here and grab the code which is here just copy this and paste it here and uh, we'll just make this as a service right and it's also going to have all our constructor and I'm going to make use of the user detail repository dot find by username and we're going to pass the username and this is going to give us says it's doesn't find the user email that's fine okay this is okay and now this is going to give us a optional of auth user right so we got the auth user the user so if the auth user does not exist so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say not auth user dot is present then we are going to say that uh, user does not found right so it's going to throw this exception or else what we're going to do is we're going to get the username um, the user dot get okay so this is going to be get get user yeah this is an optional right so get username and similarly auth user dot get the password and user dot get is active because we, we we mentioned this as um, active right so we're gonna make this is is active and account expired and all those stuff are not required for us so what I'm gonna do is instead of doing this uh, we can make use of user there is a builder um, available on this I'm going to make use of that because so that uh, other things will be clear for you dot um, username 
So that's it. So we'll just get rid of this guy from here. So this is going to return you. So that's the beauty of the builder pattern. So we have only three values that needs to be added to the object. This is all going to get the default uh, values. So let me save this and uh, let's let us try to hit the you know uh, restart the application. Okay, the application is started. Let me go to the browser and try to hit 8080. So it is asking us to log in, right? So let me give the uh, yesterday's password admin admin. It's gonna say bad credentials so we know what is the username and password we used to create so this is the same Anbu money and the money so let me put the things and then click. okay yeah because we had an error so it isn't just not falling back on that but it actually we don't have we don't have a fallback let me check what's happening okay let me go to the trust controller what we have okay yep so we should have there is nothing on um, slash right so that on you know, the home endpoint so it is v1 slash greet so that's what is expected yeah, there we go it's working so that's how the user is authenticated now so now uh, we have implemented mongodb uh, with the help um, you know with the help of string security we just integrated the user details manager along with that to get the user details from mongodb and then it is authenticated right so hope this video is helpful for you guys uh, if you really like the video don't forget to subscribe like and share uh, we'll see you in the next video where we will be looking at um, OAuth 2 um, the authorization code flow, pixie flow and all of the flows we will be you know, looking at and we'll go through a practical example and we uh, as an addition we will be creating uh, the auth server, resource server and the client uh, you know in order to demonstrate everything. Um, thank you guys, uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.